In this demonstration, we're going to first look at the remnant support in 2D nesting and then custom stock size. So we run the nesting command from within the sheet metal application and I'm going to load a previously saved job called remnant. And what you'll first see is we've got this remnant parameters section that's been added to the dialog where you specify your minimum dimension and your minimum area and also your remnant folder location. These figures are going to be very specific to your implementation and maybe to begin with a little bit of trial and error. Um, I've done some of that with the parts that I've got uh, that gives me some sensible remnant sizes based on the, the parts I've got here. Which if I just expand this out, we can see I've got uh, a simple assembly, a batch of 30, and in my stocks tab, I've added some standard stock material, and I've now got this include remnants. And if I include remnants, I can see I've already got some leftover material, some remnant from a, a previous job of the correct material spec. And we can go ahead and process the job. Once the results have been loaded, um, we can see we've had eight iterations and if we look at the preview here we can see our previous remnant has been consumed. We've got a new stock here and we've got a third stock here that also has a remnant and we can see this from the nested stocks table. If we look at each one in turn this is our remnant that's been consumed from a previous job. We've got a completely used uh, standard stock there and I have a standard stock here and we can see identified with the green shading, the remnant area that's been produced, and that's clarified in the in the dialog here. Just stepping back to the stocks tab, just as a reminder, any remnant that gets added here comes in as the highest priority. So we make sure we consume existing material first. And once that's completed, we can process the job. Any remnant material that has been created will be stored at the correct location with attributes defining its material type and size and so on. So now we take a look at the output. We can see our remnant piece has been consumed, our second piece of stock and our third stock. Now if we go to the layer settings here and I just turn off one, two and three, which are my cut and attach layers, we can see seven is in fact my border and six is the profile of my remnant that's been created into, into the appropriate location. So stepping on to custom stock size now, I've created some custom stock, which has uh, been generated uh, as a DXF file. And here, for example, this could represent some material, be that a leather hide. Um, I've created a cutout in the middle, which could represent uh, an area of poor quality. And what we're going to do now is just repeat the same nest job. I'm just going to load the job. I've got the same part files, which I'm going to use and nest. I've reduced the quantity, the batch quantity to 10. And in the stock area, from our defined stock, not only here we have custom and standard stock, we've now got stock from file. And I can go and choose that custom stock DXF file. Put in the appropriate thickness for the job I'm going to do and process. Once complete, we can see we've had five iterations. The custom stock has been consumed here. I've got no remnants and you can see the uh, arrangement of parts excluding the area that I've marked as, a, as poor quality. And uh, we can then continue on and produce the output. Cards driven by digitalization.